So one day the phone rang. It was Ron Chapman at KVIL Radio. Ron Chapman in the number one radio station in Dallas, Texas. And he said to me, Suze, what are you doing now? When you're where I was, you don't tell. <laughs> you say things like, oh, I'm looking at several possibilities, <laughs> which means the phone ain't ringing. He said, we hope you're not too busy to do something. I said, do what? He said, Jack Shell, our traffic reporter in the helicopter, is going on vacation. We thought it'd be interesting for you to do the traffic report. I said, the traffic reports in a helicopter? I had my own TV show. He said, I know. I said, how much does it pay? He told me. I said, yeah, I can be a traffic reporter in a helicopter. He said, great. Show up at North Park Inn, 6 o'clock Monday morning, ready to go to work. Now, listen. I hadn't thought that long about what a traffic reporter does. First of all, a traffic reporter has to know where he is. <laughs> and I want to ask just you women. <laughs> now, this isn't chauvinistic or anything, but I'm going to tell you right up front, I believe when it's all said and done, we women operate on a different track. <laughs> How many of you ever really have the need to use the terms north, south, east, or west <laughs> in your vocabulary. See, if somebody asks you where the bank is, doesn't left do it for you? Well, I didn't know north. North to me was like algebra. And I knew when I took that stuff, I was never going to need it. But you can't tell people to turn left if you're a traffic reporter in a helicopter because <laughs> they're coming from different directions. They'll crash into each other. So I showed up at North Park Inn, 6 o'clock Monday morning, ready to get into my first time ever time see up close touch feel helicopter to be a traffic reporter. This fabulous man walks up to me. He's six foot three, steel, gray hair, blue eyes. He said, Suze, I'm your pilot, Ken Montgomery. Do you know about the equipment? I said, what equipment? <laughs> he said, I'm busy flying the machine. You have to operate the radio equipment. I said, well, I don't know how to operate any radio equipment. He said, oh, it's real simple. I'll check you out. Put this headset on. I put this headset on, had two big earphones right here, had a microphone right here. He said, put these buttons in this hand, these buttons in this hand, and listen up. When you want to talk to Ron Chapman, who's at the radio station, and you're in the helicopter, and you talk to him, and he talks to you, but nobody else can hear the two of you, that is called the two-way radio. Press this button, talk into this microphone, you'll hear him in this ear. If you want to talk all over the radio, so everybody listening to the radio hears you on the radio, press, don't get ahead of me. <laughs> press this button, talk into this microphone, you'll hear him in this ear. You want to monitor left field, the air traffic controllers. Press this button, you'll hear him in here. If you want to talk to me because the noise and vibrations are loud and shaky, you have to communicate by headset and microphone. You press this button, talk to this microphone, comes in this ear. Got it? Got it! Mm -hmm. And we take off. I want to tell you what happens to you in your job in life as a traffic reporter. You get sick in the head because you pray for a wreck. <laughs> Well, think about it. There's no wreck. What are you going to talk about? <laughs> the second thing you do, and it's your first time to get in a helicopter, you say, huh, I want to fly by my house. <laughs> you fly by your house, you see your yard and your dog, and then you hear this voice in your ear that says, good morning, Suze, do you have anything? And it's Ron. Have anything? I didn't even know where I was. <laughs> Because when you go up in a helicopter the first time, you look down, you don't recognize anything down there. It looks just like a bunch of ants. Did I have anything? No. And if I did, what would I do with it? <laughs> I said, not yet. Because you screamed into the microphone. It was so loud up there. He said, get back with me when you have something. 45 minutes goes by. <laughs> I, haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even signed on the radio. Ron was now getting real testy. He said, do you have anything yet? I said, we're almost on it. <laughs> now I'm stalling. You know how you stall? <laughs> yeah, you do. We all do, thinking if we just had a little more time, some miracle's going to bail us out. And then all of a sudden, and I don't know why to this day, I happened to look out of the right-hand side of that 
window when I did, but I did, and I saw it. I saw it. I got so excited that I found something that instead of pressing the button that went just to him to tell him I had something, I pressed the button and went all over the radio <laughs> while he was playing Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> And this is what Dallas-Fort Worth heard on that Monday morning. I found one! <laughs> the record went, er, er, er. And Ron, who acts like everything is his plan, said, yes, Susie Humphreys in the KVI helicopter. Found one what? <laughs> A wreck! He said, no, we don't refer to them as wrecks at this radio station. We say accident. I went, uh-uh, this one is a wreck. <laughs> he said, all right, where is it? <laughs> well, it's across from a little brick house <laughs> down the street from a Texaco service station. He said, please, this is a big-time radio station. We need you to be specific. I said, listen, if you're in it, you know where it is. <laughs> if you're not, you don't care. <laughs> it was awful. It was. People that heard it swear to this day is the worst thing you ever heard on the radio. It's so bad, a nice little man pulled off Central Expressway, pulled into a 7-Eleven, popped a quarter in the payphone, called Ron and said, Ron, is she for real? <laughs> and then he said, why, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, the phone started ringing off the wall. People started calling in all morning saying, oh, have her on again. <laughs> All over Dallas, Fort Worth, men were sitting in their cars saying, My God, that's my wife up there. <laughs> it was so bad that before I'd ever gone up, Ron had suggested that after the first broadcast, I'd go into the station, we'd play back a tape of the morning show and critique it. <laughs> after that broadcast, all he said was, Suze, listen, you don't need to come in and hear this. <laughs> But I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to show up every day and say whatever comes into your mind. I said, well, what a nice job. <laughs> so for two weeks, I did the traffic reports at KVIL, and then as fate would have it, the real traffic reporter decided not to come back to work at the station. The job of traffic reporter was open, and Ron asked me to be the traffic reporter. And I did the traffic in that helicopter about, I'd say, two or three years. And then I wanted out of the chopper, and they gave me a little yellow van, and I traveled the streets of Dallas-Fort Worth playing with Ron on the radio, having more fun than the law allows. And when I left that job in September of 1995, I had been on the radio with Ron two months shy of 20 years. So what's the point? <laughs> Why do you think I'm taking you down memory lane with me today? Telling you all this stuff. Let me tell you what I think the point is. And see, it's up to you to decide what the point of your stories is. Because every one of you could get up here and tell your life in sequence like I'm telling it. Only I'm not telling all of it. <laughs> the point of my stories is, and I think it's this. I was raised by this hard-driving little independent mother who was so busy making it in the world that she didn't have time to mold me. My mom didn't mold me into what she thought I ought to be. She just let me evolve into maybe what I was meant to be. And here's the big one. My mother was so busy, she never had time to introduce the elements of doubt and fear in my life. See, I didn't have anything anybody else didn't have. We've all got it. What I had going for me was there was nobody trying to make me feel afraid or doubt that I could do it. Nobody trying to protect me, just letting me go. And everything that ever happened to me led to something else happening. 
the same way your life did. Nobody introduced the elements of doubt and fear in my life. So where does it come from, doubt and fear? And why, when we look ahead, are we always afraid? Why do we think it's going to be worse? Why do we not want to get out of the safety net? Why do we not want to go farther than we'd ever gone before? Why do we want to settle for the job, for the relationship, without seeing what needs to be done inside me to make the change? Because change comes not from outside in, it comes from inside out.